Having proper equipment for handling and caring for any bird of prey is absolutely vital to falconry. Now, the equipment that we use has been fine-tuned over 5,000 years. That there is no form of animal husbandry that goes back that far. And so people have found what works, what's healthy for the bird. Now again, anytime you're dealing with live birds of prey, uh, people can be alarmed at the sight of a, of a bird in captivity, sitting on somebody's fist. And, but think about it in terms of, for example, a dog. If you went to a park, you might have a collar on your dog, you might have your dog on a leash, and as you're walking, you, there's a proper way to walk a dog. Then maybe you get to the park, you take the leash off, you might leave the collar on, and you let the dog run around. And then when you're done, you put the leash back on, walk home. There's some dogs that do better with a harness, like a husky, some of the working dogs. They need a full body harness, and that works better than a collar. So people are still fine tuning what equipment works best on a dog. Birds of prey, we've got a 5,000 year head start. So I've got a spread here with some of the different tools. I'm gonna to show you the basics of how to make the equipment that we use to handle a bird of prey. Now the first thing that we have on is what are called jesses. This is going to uh, represent a bird's leg. Now uh, this is bigger than a bird's leg. Birds have very thin legs. There's no muscle on the part of the leg that we're dealing with. It's basically just bone and tendon and skin and heavily armored scales. This is about as big around as, as an eagle's leg. And but we're gonna pretend it's something smaller like a hawk. And we're going to use leather but not just any leather, this is kangaroo leather. Kangaroo is our best choice because it is very lightweight, but it is very, very strong. In fact, this is what whip makers use to make whips nowadays because it's one of the strongest leathers on the planet. So kangaroo leather um, is what we're gonna use to make first anklets. So again, pretend this is a leg, we're gonna put an anklet around and then have what's called a jess go through. So. Fortunately, this can be cut back and forth. So looking at the leg here, we have to do a rough measurement of how big around this is going to go. Because we're going to have a grommet that's gonna go through. So we've got our rough measurement. We're cut a, a strip of kangaroo hide. and we make sure that will match going around there. Now, this anklet, we don't want to be too tight, too loose. If it's too loose, it'll slide off. If it's too tight, it can cause abrasions. And so we want to do somewhere in between. So we're gonna make a mark here. This is a leather punch. This is a rotary leather punch, so it actually has different sizes that we can use. Um, we'll have to get a little bit creative with this. So we'll find a spot. We punch through both sides. And if you twist a little bit, that makes it a lot easier because the leather will keep going through the punch and if you do this too much, it can jam. So if it's jamming, just give it a twist. So now we have a hole all the way through. That's a marking hole. Take it back off. Now, this is one side of a grommet and we're gonna push that over the hole directly into the leather. And when we're done, it leaves a mark that's a little bigger than the original hole that we just made. Now we have to again get a bit creative and we're going to punch around just a little bigger than the size of the hole that we just marked. It's gotta be a little bigger because leather stretches. Now this process involves a lot of back and forth and a lot of making sure, measuring, remeasuring, because this is going to go on a bird's ankle. We want to make sure that it's safe and the bird is uh, not in any distress. So that fits. You can see all the way through to the other side. Now we're going to go and match that up. And we'll go ahead and mark it on the other side. Now remember, if you are actually putting these anklets on a bird, you're making two sets. Now, if these are the industry standard, if you ever see a flight show at a zoo, or if you have an education group that comes out, 
or if you see a falconer in the field, or if you become a falconer yourself, this is a skill you need to have. This is the, this is the best jest system and tethering system that we have come up with in the past 5,000 years. So that goes all the way through. You can see that side of the grommet. Now the other half is gonna come here. So I've gotta test it and see that does go through. Okay, now we're gonna test it on our imaginary leg. Make sure that goes all the way through. And so far, that, that can, there's still some looseness there. That can twist, that can spin, so that's pretty good measurement. All right, now the next step is something to prevent abrasions on our imaginary bird leg. This leather is pretty soft, but still, it could cause an abrasion, it could cause some roughness on our bird's leg. So, we're gonna take leather scissors, and we're going to go ahead and cut tiny, tiny little cuts along the edge. Now some people, I do them pretty big. I do pretty wide gaps. Uh, a lot of people do more of them and do them smaller. This system has worked well for me for, for over two decades. So, and I'll show you how this works in just a second, but these little snips make all the difference in the world to preventing any scale damage or skin damage on your bird. Now you think about a dog collar, it goes around a dog's neck and they have fur that is keeping that dog collar from making an abrasion. Hawks, eagles, falcons, they have scales on their legs and so it's very stiff, it's very different. So all of these cuts that I've just made, I'm going to now fold them in And then when that spins around, you can see how they flare out. So we'll put that on our leg. And you can see having that sort of a flare prevents there from being a, a cutting edge on the leather that might cause an abrasion or any damage on their scales. So we're to that far. So now we're almost to the level where we can put the grommets on. But first, you always want to have your equipment be strong enough but as light as you can possibly be within that strength limit. So what we're going to do is try to cut out a little bit of weight here. So on this outside edge, we're going to go ahead and follow around and cut off some of that excess leather. Now, there are some falconers who will trim this all the way down to the grommet itself. I like to have a little bit more leather sticking out around the edge, just enough to frame that grommet. Just enough there. Okay, so we've made it this far. Now when we're putting this on a bird, you're gonna have somebody else helping you and you're holding the bird carefully. And, or you might have, if you're putting a replacement set on, your bird may be perched on your arm or your friend's arm, your apprentice's arm, and you are clamping this on. So to make sure that it sets correctly, what I do is right here, I'll put a little dab of super glue on, not much, just to hold it in place while you put the grommet on. We're not actually putting on this on a bird, so we don't need to do that. But imagine if I put a tiny bit of super glue, wrapped it around the leg, and now we're gonna put the grommet on. So grommets have two sides. We put those two sides together, like so. And then we have, this is a custom made tool. This is a pair of vice grips that somebody has welded two parts of, of a grommet setter on. Now, if you're doing leather work normally, these two parts are just separate. You set one on a table, set the other side on top, and you have a hammer, and you hammer. Birds, they don't like you hammering next to them. So falconry suppliers have started manufacturing these. There's many suppliers around the world that manufacture these with the grommets. And you're gonna see how slick this is. I'm gonna put that on. One little clamp. And you're done. Now, again, this would have been held in place with a little dab of super glue. We didn't worry about that because we weren't doing this on an actual bird. Now, now this is, uh, you can see that that still turns and is loose. 
Now this is wider than we would normally do on a bird of prey. This, I'm making this a bit oversized so you can see how this process works. This is called an anklet. Next step is we are going to make a jess. Now one is called a jess, a pair of them are called jesses, and it's the tethering system that not only we use, but is kind of the legal requirement in, in most countries. Same thing, we're gonna take a piece of kangaroo hide, take our leather scissors, and uh, is in falconry, your sponsor will help you know how, what size to make these. You don't want them too big, you don't want them too small. You always want them to be as light as possible. Before falconers had access to kangaroo hide, traditionally we'd use calf skin, British calf skin, which was very strong and light, but this is even stronger and even lighter, so it's what we use. All right, so on this jest, the first thing I've done is it's a strip, it's a big long rectangle with a point on one end. Now, the next step is I'm going to fold this over three times. This is really kind of a cool, Cool knot. So that's folded over three times. I'm gonna take my leather punch, punch straight through, and give it a twist again. Make sure that's all the way through. So one hole with a three-part fold. Now we're gonna put this pointy end through. Now to get it to start, I gotta pinch the end a little bit there so it'll curve and, and, and point through. Now, that's actually kind of an important thing. It's kind of like if you start your seatbelt the wrong way up top coming through the bar and it twists and goes through, it's the same thing. You're trying to get this to go through this hole and because I did a pinch down, it's gonna go through the correct way. If otherwise it might pinch up like that and this knot won't, won't end correctly. So I'm gonna pull that all the way through and there you go, that is a jest. Now, we're gonna see if it'll fit. That just goes through and it can twist easily and it pulls right out. Now, we're not done yet. It's always good to have a pair of these spare lying around, just like this, without the next step we're about to do. But with the next step, I'm gonna to go to a smaller hole size and I'm gonna punch a hole down at the bottom, like so. Then I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm going to cut a strip going up. This is our next stage in how a bird is held. Now, this little hole right here is actually very important. In the old days, they just cut a line, but what we found is leather can kind of tear, almost like paper, and so having this circle at the bottom stops that if the bird is jumping and pulling. So, the Jess goes through the anklet. And remember, bird with two legs, it's got two of these anklets, two of these Jesses. Now, now we're gonna use a swivel next. Um, now this is a fishing swivel. If you were to go fishing for trout in a river or a lake, you might hook one of these onto your fishing line. And a fishing swivel uh, lives up to its name. It swivels, it spins. And its whole purpose is preventing your fishing line from spinning, 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 and growing weak and breaking. Um, well, we use a swivel, but we use a swivel for deep sea fishing. This is if you were going fishing in the ocean for sharks or, or tuna or giant fish, swordfish, sailfish, that is the deep sea version of this. Now, in Europe and Asia, uh, there are actual swivels manufactured specifically for falconry. But in the United States, North America, we usually use these deep sea fishing swivels. So a swivel goes through, the Jess. Now remember, there would be two Jesses doing this at the same time. Hooks on like that. Now, on the bird's leg, that swivels around. And this is going to be attached to a leash. There's a few different kinds of leashes. I like braided leashes out of synthetic material because they can handle the heat and the cold. They can handle if your bird jumps into its bath dish, takes a bath, gets back out, it doesn't weaken the leash. So, this leash slides through like this. So remember, you would have another Jess connecting right here. Two legs, two Jesses going to one swivel, but that one swivel then 
can spin. So the leash doesn't get tangled up ideally. And this is how, if your bird is in your backyard on a perch enjoying the sun and taking a bath, or if you are driving in a car, or if you are holding your bird, then you, this is the setup you have. Now let's say you go to the field. You're ready to fly your bird. Let's use a falcon as an example. You drive out, you're going to some open country, you're gonna fly your bird. Your bird is wearing a hood. Your bird is wearing the jesses, the swivel, the leash. You get out to the field, you take off the leash, that's your first step. Then you take off the swivel. So again, this would be similar to taking a dog to a park, to a dog park, and you take off its leash. Now you've got this on, and depending on the order, you would, you would take your hood off now. So your bird's looking around, it's fluffing its feathers up, it's going to the bathroom, it's getting, a, it's getting used to the light. Then you take the jesses out. So now your bird is only wearing anklets. Now again, these, this, this is a monstrous anklet big enough for an eagle that I made to show you because bigger is easier to show on film. This is a much smaller item. So the bird is now, goes off and flies, hunts, does whatever, you call it back when it lands back on your glove, you give it some food, you, you, when you're ready to go home, you put these jesses back on and you put the swivel back on and you put the leash back on and the hood back on, put the bird in your vehicle, and you go home. So that is your basic tethering equipment. And again, this has been fine-tuned. This is our up-to-date best system uh, over the past 5,000 years for restraining a bird when you're traveling.